Hi guys, this is the advisor and welcome back to my channel. On Monday the 9th of January 2023, I made phone contact with Joseph Pattison, leader of Jamaica's new third political party, the UIC, requesting an interview. At that time, I made it clear that the topic I intended to discuss with him was the crime situation in Jamaica. He agreed for the interview and we decided to set a, a date. Immediately after that conversation, I sent him four of my most recent videos on the topic. These are as follows. One where I accuse the Minister of National Security of this country of being a lead, a, the leader of gangs in Montego Bay and who was a former leader of the Stone Crusher gang and who is now facilitating criminality in Jamaica himself, albeit him is the Minister of National Security. I also sent another video as accusing the Jamaica Constabulary Force of assassinating Senior Superintendent of Police, Dayton Henry, and explain why and give the circumstances. I also sent a video accusing Jamaica's Chief Justice of being involved in criminality and being a member of the Klansman gang and always fighting against the police and doing his best to keep um, the, the, the blood, those bloodthirsty people in the Klansman gang on the street or to get them back out on the street. The fourth video I sent him was why Jamaicans, Jamaica's crime problem cannot be fixed and I explained the, the, the reasons how the ways how we can sort it out and why we can get the job done and how it can be fixed right so i i made it quite clear to him how what i was about anyway and wednesday the, and wednesday february 8th we spoke again and we settled for doing the interview on friday the 10th of february at 6 p.m which is exactly one calendar month after our initial contact on the morning of the in interview, at 7.26, I sent him another video, which I had posted to my channel the previous day. And look at the title. Exposing DCP Fitzbailey and the CTAC Patty Shop, in which I told the world about Fitzbailey, his involvement in, in corruption, and him facilitating gun running in Jamaica and is both incompetent and are a facilitator of criminality, him and the entire CTAC group of policemen. Along with that, I sent a specs particular um, email along with that post. And I said, this is a screenshot from my laptop. I said, good morning, Mr. Patterson. Please take a look at the latest video I posted last night. It pertains to an aspect of the topic we'll be discussing tonight. It also gives you an idea of how my thought process works. So, there you go. I made it quite clear for the man to understand what he's up against. I also said in the caption, you know, in other words, I had gone out of my way to prepare this man to be interviewed by me. Now, if this man was paying attention, he would know that I'm a no-nonsense person. I hit hard, very hard, and I don't take prisoners. In other words, if you are not on top of your game, then welcome to the slaughterhouse. I mean, if I can attack some of the most influential people in power in this country, why would I go easy on Joseph Pattison? And an aspiring prime minister. But to be fair, if he was reading the signs, he would know that he needed to bring his ear game. As, as for me, having watched Pattison on his podcast over time, here is a gist of the messages he sent out so far. And these are just the things I've picked up from, you know, watching him on and off, you know. He's saying... His messages are, our system of government is an old relic of colonialism. That's one. Two, he said, there is no difference between the two parties that have led us since colonial times. True to independence and true to this day. Three, both major parties are representative of that colonial past and acts at the behest of the old colonial rulers. 
Four, we need a paradigm shift that will take us away from this path and for us to follow a different path that will make the country more prosperous. Five, since we have tried both parties throughout the past 60 odd years, then it is time we bring something new. Six, a lot of Jamaicans are fed up with the incompetency and the corruption and the nepotism that are going on, and therefore a change needs to be made. Now, I can relate to everything he said here. He hasn't said anything wrong. Mr. Patterson said everything right, and but here is the mundane thing about it. Everything that Mr. Patterson said is what any third party person putting themselves up would have to come and say to appear different. So he's not saying anything that any third party coming up today, coming in, in, into the system now, would not have to say. So nothing he says so is any anyway surprising. But so far, he seemed to have bypassed the whole issue of crime. Now, taming the crime monster is the tiebreaker for me. For me, any political leader or party that can prove competent enough to break the back of crime in Jamaica will have my full support. And we have proven over the past 60 odd years to know that neither the PNP nor the JLP will ever be able to solve the crime problem. So since Joseph Pattison is putting himself up to be elected to the high office of prime minister, it is only fear that we find out what he is capable of. I had to find out. I needed to know my, my, for myself, and I need the whole country to know. I need the world to know. Now, let me make it quite clear. His criticism of both parties are both fair and reasonable. So I'll never bash him for, bash him for anything he has said about them. But what stood out for me in all of Mr. Patterson's speeches was what he did not say. He never explained to the nation how he would achieve any of what he proposed. All he told us really was what needed to be done. Now, how identify a problem is one thing. But if you lack the competency, the methodology, the determination, the commitment, and the ability to fix these problems, then what would be the point of taking out one incompetent set of crooks and putting in another incompetent set of crooks? As we, are, as we Jamaicans say, we can't swap black dog for monkey. That don't make no sense. So I had to really find out if Joseph Pattison was capable of the job. So my intention was to interview Mr. Pattison to find out for myself what he was really made of. Because as far as I, as far as I, all I heard coming from him were platitudes and criticism, but nothing about his methods of approach to the nation's concern. So, as everybody who had been following me on this channel knows, my pet topic is crime. And up to this, that point, I cannot recall here Mr. Patterson even mentioning that topic at all. And for me, once you break the back, back of crime, we are three quarters of the way to curing all of the nation's ills. I needed to know what it was really made of, and this nation also needed to know. So my intention was to pin him down to that specific topic and give him full latitude to elaborate as much as he can. When I first made contact with Mr. Patterson, I had given him full information. I, I, okay, I need to mention here that when I first made contact with Mr. Patterson, I gave him full information about my channel, about myself, and about my reasons for needing the interview with him. At the time, I made it 100% clear that I needed to discuss the taming of the crime monster, and that is all. I, that is what I have said to him every time I call or made phone contact or WhatsApp messages to him. He knew that that was the topic. I made it clear and unequivocal and unequivocal that I had the nation, I and the nation needed to know what would be his approach to the problem. That's what this channel is about. Education and enlightenment. And of course a bit of entertainment now and again. But here is what took place on the day. When we started to speak, it was at that time he was telling me when 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 we when I contacted him on WhatsApp 
and was to start the recording that was the time he was telling me that he was at the time going uh, uh, was live on his youtube channel now i don't have an intrinsic problem with that because i can handle any discussion anywhere at any time even in my sleep but out of courtesy he could have either told me that he wouldn't what the situation would have been i had the decency to make our discussion exclusive so he put me on live on his channel without saying that, without I think it was this was discourteous. And he didn't give me the chance to come on live and give me his, his um, undivided attention. Those were the two major strikes, which I could overlook, of course, but just letting you know that that was the, what, how the gentleman acted. Anyway, the, among the first thing I said to him was, I'm looking for a hero. That this station need a hero and that, that he could be that hero. His, his immediate response was he did not want to be a hero because heroes die. That response told me that either this man is a coward or he does not have good command of the English language. Because heroes does not necessarily die. At least not at the not during their um heroic activities. There are lots of heroes who got old and died in their sleep happily and peacefully, with no worries at all. So perhaps he meant martyr, because martyrs die for their causes. But heroes can live happily to be grand old ages and die peacefully in their sleep. Now here is the thing. If he was so adamant that he doesn't want to be a hero, then he cannot lead me. A coward can't lead me because that is a coward. A coward will leave you on the battlefield to fend for yourself because he's too afraid to die. This reminds me of a speech by Martin Luther King in which he said, A man who, has found, who hasn't found anything worth dying for isn't fit to live. And I believe that. A man who hasn't found anything worth dying for isn't fit to live. And if Jody Fattison isn't fit to, he doesn't see it fit to put up his life on the line for his country, then him can't lead me. I'm not saying for dead, but him can't lead me. Now, I respect Sir Alexander Bustamante, and he's, this is a case in point. When the police raised their guns at the crowd of protesters on King Street in the 1940s and was about to shoot them down, Bustamante went to the front, beard his chest and said, shoot me and let my people go. Now that is a hero and he died peacefully in his sleep. Based on Mr. Pattinson's response, I'm going to assume that him would have just go to the back, if him sick police come and hold up them gun, and he would go to the back and slink away in a down one back alley and go and left the people them. You know, that's not the type of leader me want. So, whether Joseph Pattison is a coward or he, is, he simply doesn't have a good command of the English language, I don't think he can lead me because I don't want a coward to lead me. I, I, I abhor cowards on, on the whole. And if you are prime minister, you, you're going to have to go to you, the United Nations and speak. CNN, BBC, NBC, and all the world's networks may tune in on you and listen to you speak. And you have to give interviews to some of the highest intellectual people in this world. And if you don't, can't command the English language very well, then me really give a strike the song. I like people who can speak, who knows what they are saying. To represent me internationally and once you're prime minister you're going to by default represent me internationally okay Do, as we spoke i gave him the floor i just i didn't pin him down to any specific topic on crime i just said uh, i just said the floor is yours take it away the issue is crime guess what the gentleman did he started talking about the colonial past and why we need a third party and that he's new and different and all of the things that he have always said in his other messages to, to the nation and i gave him about 15 minutes because i wanted to give him time 
I want to give him the time to get around to it because in his preamble, I expect that he would he maybe want to use some cases in point and then get around to the gist of the matter. After about 15 minutes, I realized that Joseph Patterson did still not touch on the topic. So what I did, I said to him, Sir, I called him back, called his attention and said, Sir, we need to speak on the matter of crime. Crime is what we need to speak on, and I wanted to speak on. That was when he said, well, um, once I, I, remember I spoke about getting the youths in, in training program, and once I fix the social ills of the country, crime will automatically be fixed because once you fix the social ills, crime will just follow automatically. And then again, I will get the youths into a youth program, all the unruly youths and all the youths who are out of a job and are on the streets. I would take them in, put them in training program, see that they get jobs so that the gunmen and the bad men can't get them to use. And that will cause crime to drop. Now, if this is Joseph Patterson's crime plan, because I let him go on for another 15 minutes. But when I realized that Joseph Patterson's um, crime plan is to not touch crime, but fix all other social ills, and crime will automatically be fixed. I realized that I couldn't take this interview any further. And so, at about between 28 to 30 minutes of, of initial contact, I close it off, tell him that we had to keep it short, and I um, just left the conversation. Very disappointed. Now, at first, I had considering that I would just delete that because it did not meet up to my high standard of information I wanted to pass on to the public and I felt I would be wasting my time putting this out. It had nothing of substance that I could pass on to my viewers because I have an intellectual set of viewers. So what I, I said, you know, I would just skip and go find something else to put up. I, I, I wouldn't bother with this because I don't have time to waste and the people on my channel don't have that time to waste. And I didn't want to waste their, their time either. But after I didn't delete it, and after a day or two, I said, you know what? Every, the world need to know of my interview with Joseph Patterson. First thing I need to do, I need to post his video. But I have to first, first post a video explaining my position on the discussion we had and then after that give it a day or two for everybody to take in that video and then i'm going to post the video with him and normally you know when i'm posting a video with an interview i normally would get the person on the line and we have a off the record discussion which would not be which which would be taped but would be cut out before posting until the formal discussion itself or interview itself starts. But in this particular case, I'm not going to cut out anything. I'm going to take from the first initial moment when uh, Joseph Patterson picked up the phone until the very end, uncut, unblemished, just as it is, unedited so that people can see what I'm saying because I don't want anybody to go and say I doctored this thing and I didn't carry the story straight or whatever and when you're finished tell me if I was reasonable in my position on this gentleman because if I'm good my country has to know that is my duty on this channel and if i'm bad the people have to know because that is also my duty that is my purpose as a responsible jamaican now for anybody who is going to bash me for what i have found out and what i've said about my impression of joseph patterson if anybody think i'm being unfair to the gentleman then i want you all to use the same logical processes of deduction that i used I use the facts as the foundation of my study. And the conclusions were extrapolated from these premises. You know, the facts are indisputable. Therefore, the conclusion must be true. So, anybody want to come at me, come at me. I give 
good service to this nation and it is my duty and i have started it now stand by guys for the um other for the total um recording of that interview with joseph patterson in about 48 hours after i've given people enough time to go through what i have said in this particular post this i am an alpha male in fact i'm an alpha sigma male and therefore i believe in raw power i believe in raw power i believe in force right and therefore i will do whatever i can to protect the people that i have to protect because alpha sigma males are protectors right and protectors even die in the process of protecting the people they have to protect now a man who is afraid in another i'm not afraid of death i'm not afraid as you can see from my post i take on some of the most powerful and influential people in this country and i've never had any fear i take them on because i'm an alpha sigma male and some people ask me all the while, why do I do it? Am I not afraid they might somebody might come at me and harm me? All I say to them is, tell them when they're coming to join the line. Join the line. You see? So a person like me could never take orders from somebody like Joseph Pattison. Because we are in two different categories of masculinity. And I'm not here to, I'm not bashing him. I'm just telling the people the truth and to say to him, you are a work in progress, sir. And, and I mean, do better. If you can learn from what I am teaching you, then you just may be a force to be reckoned with at some time in the future. But if your nature is that of a beta male, where you are, are somewhat subservient and quick to flee, then I mean, you cannot get my respect, much less for me to follow you. So, there you go. Particular video. Thank you very much. Look forward to seeing my next video. Like, share, and um, leave a comment below. Thanks for watching.